50. I, I get it. This would be no. I think we should sit a little further apart. You go sit down. Okay, so uh, you sit in that one. There we go. Okay, there we go. I'll just gaze dreamily at you. While we're perfect. Okay, it's perfect. So, uh, Spencer, could you Google? It's one of some sort of internet thing. Could you just tell people? We are a small technology company in the yeah. Bay Area. Some of you may have heard of us. Um, and what is your thing? Sure. So I focus on emerging platforms. No, I mean, what is Google's what thing? What is Google's thing? Um, Google's thing is, frankly, best in class consumer experiences. And you're going to take that to payments? That is the hope. So where is it in the US at the moment? Yeah, great, great question. So uh, the US is going quite well. There's uh, about a million and a half new activations a month. Wow. Which is pretty good. You know, the, the contactless infrastructure, as many of you know, is still quite nascent roughly 2 million of 9 million merchant locations. Um, it's gaining some steam. You know, EMV is helping. It's not exactly where we want it to be. But it's, um, so you relaunched in America, and it's going pretty well. It's going really well, yeah. But the reason I'm talking to you right now is because you're going to bring this to Europe, right? Your, Europe is particularly exciting. Um, you know, number one, Android penetration, which is um, really enjoying just phenomenal growth around the globe. Um, European markets, you know, Spain, for example, 85% um, Android penetration, wow. super high-end devices. Um, you know, you look at markets outside of the Europe, you know, Australia. You know, not only is the, the contactless infrastructure phenomenal, but it, it's fast. Um, and we think about a world in the U.S. where this move to EMV is, is really slowing things down. So it, if, we just, if we focus on the U.K. for a moment, because obviously I'm curious about the U.K., in the U.K. right now, one in 10 card payments is contactless. One in five low-value payments under 30 pounds is already contactless. You know, contactless is already getting this kind of steam. What are you going to do with Android Pay in the UK? Yeah, so first, we, many of you may have seen, we announced the UK um, nationwide, MBNA, HSBC, um, TFL, we're, we're in testing right now. And the speed at which we're running through the turnstile for the transit use case, which, which is so critical, is, um, is, is pretty phenomenal. Um, so what we're bringing to the consumer side of the equation is a great question. I mean, the reality is the, car, the card form factor, it isn't really broken. Um, we believe that the in-store experience on Android, just it needs to work and it needs to be brilliant. Um, the reality is we're solving, frankly, a bigger problem in the online context in app. No, no, I agree with that, yeah. and I, I think I want to come back to that in a minute, because I see that as a big part of the future. But I, I'm still curious about the difference between what you do in the US and what are you going to do in Europe. So if you, if you don't mind me asking, is the business model going to be different in Europe from the US? Yeah, no, it's, that, that's a great question. You know, first and foremost, I should say, uh, with this esteemed audience, um, we are not in this business. These ones aren't that esteemed. Yeah, some. Say, are you looking further back, maybe? We're not, we're not in this business to toll um, anyone. Right? We're, we're, we're certainly not tolling uh, the issuing banks. We're not going to toll the merchants who are already under enormous margin pressure. Um, we sit, Google sits in a really um, uh, interesting and somewhat humbling position in that we, we are influencing 250 billion in commerce around the globe. How are you influencing that? So our search platform, for example, right? Our search platform, which is the, the core bread and butter, um, you effectively answering people's questions. People are raising their hand every day, and we're answering those questions with commercial messages that are driving real value for so this, merchants this, and marketers. OK, so I know we didn't practice this answer, but I just want, So the business model is, is not based on some weird, ancient, 20th century kind of transaction fee thing. Uh, this is a business model that's kind of integrated. There's a bigger picture here to, is, is this where we're going with pa this? Payments, so Android as a strategic asset around the globe. Um, which, by the way, runs all of Google services um, and, and has a very, very healthy ecosystem of apps developers um, and publishers who are profiting day over day from that platform, Android needs to be best in class. It's, yeah. it's really very simple. And payments has to work, and it has to be seamless, and frankly, it, it has to be in, almost in the background. No, no, people will put up 
with Donkey Kong crashing or whatever on their phone. I know, I take that point. Payments is a little bit different. Can you push you back to the rest of Europe? So the UK is already announced. Can you say anything about the rest of Europe? We look at Android penetration. We look at markets with high-end devices, um, and there are many. Uh, I'm not going to remark right now about other, uh, other markets, but you know, it's safe to say that the large majority of Europe is, is, uh, is, is I think, prime. You know, I think what we're doing is we're looking at where we can add the most value. Right? And again, it comes down to the ecosystem. It's the merchant footprint, the contactless ecosystem. Um, these are things that we look at and evaluate. Um, and then, of course, there's you know, the appetite and readiness of the financial institutions. You know, this is not, Android Pay is not our first foray into payments. Right? Like we, we, we've had many attempts, some of which have failed. You know it's hard. It's very, very hard. And you know, what we're most excited about is we have a platform that takes into consideration the people in the audience, everyone in the ecosystem, and we're driving value for consumers, for banks, for merchants, for the networks, um, both on a national basis and the domestic schemes. We think there's a, uh, you know, and, and so just to get back so to your soon question. is the answer soon. soon. The answer is soon, okay. and, and again, it's about adding value. Yeah. Now, you said that you didn't mind uh, tough questions, so let me just, I don't know if you've heard about this Apple Pay thing that's going on. Um, and uh, Samsung also, uh, and Chase Pay, if I remember. Oh, and like the Tesco payment thing. And I mean, basically everyone's going to have a payment app pretty soon. So what's the special source around this? I mean, you have to compete against, I have to say, some pretty tough players in this space. Yeah. You know, not just the banks, but new players coming in, other technology companies, credit card companies, and so on. Give us an insight. What is your special source? What is Android Pay going to do to carve out a space in, in a crowded market? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I, I think first and foremost, we're incredibly excited about all the momentum around contactless. So it, it means um, the entire ecosystem rises and, and everyone benefits. Um, the secret sauce for us is quite simple. There, there are two parts. Number one, we are embedded or built into the operating system. So we are resident on Android. Um, number two is similar. I spoke a little bit about our ads platform and AdWords. The reality is AdWords was built. The core foundational pillar is on an open platform. We took that same algorithm that answers commercial messages you know, in real time, and we gave that to publishers. You know, last year, we paid out $16 billion to publishers. Right, who took that same algorithm and were able to now place ads on their sites. That core paradigm made its way into Android, and that paradigm has made its way into Android Pay. And what that means, very simply, is it's an open platform. And I, you know, when we announced this platform at our developer conference back in June of last year, um, I don't think we did a particularly good job of really talking about the benefits of what open meant. What, why not? What? You know, I think, I, think, um, I think there was a lot to focus on, and I think we were in process of developing trust of the financial ecosystem. Right. And so the APIs enable an experience, and we're very, very excited. You know, yesterday you heard BBVA talk about their open platform. We're really excited they're going to be integrating into our service layer, into our APIs. Um, same is true for HSBC. So the secret sauce, to answer your question, Dave, the secret sauce is simple. Well, give, give us a bit more detail on sure. that. When you say they're integrating into the platform, what, what, what does that mean? I mean, what's the, what is the consumer experience for an HSBC customer? What does integrating into the platform mean to them? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. So the consumer experience goes like this. I'm in the BBVA app, or I'm in the HSBC app, to, take this, to, to use this example. HSBC, um, I'm, I'm looking at balances or transaction history. And at the bottom, there's a button that says, add this, add this credential to Android Pay. And I click, and I go down the happy path, because um, I, you know, I know Dave you, is who he says he is. You do know no consumers know what a credential is, right? This so is true. You're it's, not going to call it, it that in the app, say right? add this card. OK, thank yeah. you. So it says, add this card to Android Pay. Um, I go through a simple ID and V flow. My card is now available. I walk into a physical store with a contactless reader. I don't need the Android Pay app resident. Right, this is the issuer's proprietary app. My phone simply needs to be powered up. I wave it over the reader. HSBC card art is front and center. Now, the other major differentiator here is that 
we're in market, and when we come to a market, we're not only working with the financial institutions and the issuing banks in that given region. We're working with the merchants. We're working with the processors. And, you know, effectively, we're working with merchants on two prongs, right? One is acceptance, and the other is in-app payments. So in the U.S., just to paint a little bit of a picture, we have 1,000 apps that have buy with Android Pay. Wow. Right? So in the U.K., when we made our announcement, we have 30 or 40 apps that are integrating Android Pay. And so we spoke a little bit about the problem we're solving on the consumer side. I would argue that from a user standpoint, the average checkout flow on a merchant side, I have to tap my phone 120 times. Like, that's unacceptable. Well, you mean putting in, like, name and address? Yeah, name, address, my credential, my CVV. It's, it's, it's complex and it's, it's laborious. Merchants lose because the transactions don't happen, right? And so we're in market and merchants are integrating the buy with Android Pay button in every market. So when you've gone in app like that, I mean, what are the dynamics of that? I mean, this is for, the sh this is like, I want to provide the same payment experience to my customers, whether they're standing in the store or on the website or calling up on the call center. They're going to go to the app and they're going to use Android Pay inside the app. This is, this is the future, right? This is where things are going. This, this, is, this is here now. Um, you know, the notion of taking 120 taps down to one or two, um, there's an enormous value for, for merchants, uh, for, for the user, for, for the banks who are, who are actually going to now get credit for that transaction. And how do you, when you integrate into those apps, how, I mean, the security of these platforms have got to be absolutely paramount, right? So when you integrate into the apps, how do you make sure that you're, you're coming up with like a secure solution? You have like some guidelines or something? I mean, how does this work? So, so Android Pay is based on the network standards for tokenization. Right. right? Oh, okay. so, so, so effectively what we've done this go round um, is we've partnered very closely with the industry. So whether it's a transaction in store or it's a remote transaction in app, these are standards that are, uh, you know, effectively, it, it, it's the industry is behind these standards. Right. And those standards, you know, things like tokenization and so on, uh, they're not unique to Android. I mean, those are industry standards. Let's just make this clear. So uh, all of these other payment systems, they're going to be using that same tokenization infrastructure. You know, that's not a differentiator, is it? That's just, that's just the table it's stakes. It's table stakes. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's exactly right. I mean, I think where, where we really feel, so, I, you know, I, you talk a little bit about the consumer side of the equation here. Yeah. Um, we believe that um, the consumer experience, you know, we spoke a little bit about, you know, the notion of the card form factor. But, you know, we believe that the, really where we can add unique value is around that in-store experience. You know, and, well, give, and, give me an example sure. of an in-store experience you've built that's different. Yeah, that's a great lead-in. So uh, I, some of you may have heard about a, uh, a pilot that we're currently running in the U.S., again, announced at our, our developer conference last year, um, called Handsfree. Oh, right. Yeah. Have you, you've heard about yeah, this. Yeah. So ha Handsfree, quite simply, takes the notion of the payment and completely puts it in the background, such that a user with an Android device downloads an app, um, they walk into a physical uh, merchant location, in this case, McDonald's, where we're live with a pilot in the Bay Area. There are 50 McDonald's locations and about 50 small businesses that are participating. And really, it's early, early days, and we're just trying to evaluate, is there a consumer value proposition here? But quite simply, what happens is the user goes up to the uh, associate, orders their Happy Meal and their Big Mac and their fries, um, and they simply say, I want to pay with Google. There's a tender type on the point of sale. They walk out. They've never taken their phone out of their pocket. Yeah. There's no cash being exchanged. Um, and it's a, it's a pretty magical experience. It, I was going to say, this sounds like David Blaine kind of stuff. So <laughs> can, you just, can you just walk me through? Because I didn't quite catch that. So I go in and buy a Big Mac, and then I say I want to pay with Google, and then they give me the Big Mac, and then I, work, well, I walk out. I say I want to pay with Google. So clearly something's happening behind the scenes yeah, that there's, I'm there's, not seeing. There's an right? integration. Absolutely. There's an integration into the point of sale, which is in place today. With this, with this pilot that I'm referencing. Um, they ask you for your initials. The initials are the identifier. Uh, We're using geolocation, uh, um, proximity-based to understand that your Android phone is in your pocket. Right. And within a couple of centimeters, we could identify where you are in the queue. Wow, that's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. Okay, so the point is that kind of thing, right, when you, when you go into the retailer's application, that means you can deliver a much better customer experience. The retailer is always going to be able to deliver a better customer experience in their stores, right? Because they know how their stores work and 
or deliver. So this idea of the payment kind of vanishing inside the retailer's app, that seems to me to be quite a strong trend for the future, right? Absolutely. So, I mean, we talk all about contactless now, but when you're looking forward, there's a much bigger spectrum than just contactless. You know, I, I think the thing that, the reason why we're so focused on NFC and contactless today is, is the ubiquity. And ubiquity right. matters in payments. Yeah. The hands-free pilot is an experiment. And to your, to your point, this is the future. And, and frankly, it isn't about the payment, it is about the identity. Yeah. Um, it's almost like identity is sort of like the new money in a way when you go into a shop and pay with the thing, right? So. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, from, just from a pure retailer uh, standpoint, you know, I, I liked the, the, the remarks, the Alipay remarks a few minutes ago, but, you know, this notion that um, retailers don't need more payments platforms, they need more customers. Yeah, she was great, wasn't she? She was great, yeah. yeah it's, um, you know, it, the, the, the idea that, um, you know, from a consumer vantage, um, I shouldn't have to think about these things. And by, by the way, it goes well beyond the payment type, right? It's my loyalty identifier, right? Like it's the fact that Boots in London or Walgreens in the US or Kohl's in Australia, um, they should know who I am. So this yeah. is what it's about then, right? When I, when I walk into the store, the retailer knows who I am. I mean, this is what this is really about, right? So formulating all of those possibilities around that kind of knowledge, that transforms the retail experience. Right now, under the conventional, old-fashioned, I've got my card, I go to the pause, the retailer doesn't know who I am until I go and check out. And, and that doesn't enable them to deliver me the fantastic kind of retail experience. The, if you can let me use the phrase, this is a world where we go from checkout to check-in. Is that a reasonable summary of yeah, your vision I, I think that's the future? I think that's incredibly well said. Uh, you know, we, we have a, a construct, an API called Save to Android Pay, very simply, merchants or any third party can link up this API and save an asset, an artifact, an offer, um, a gift card directly into Android Pay. And what we're doing today, and it's, it's, proving, it's proving to deliver a pretty significant, enormous, and merchant value, um, is if I'm proximity to Boots and I happen to have an offer or a discount, we're going to use the framework built into Android. And we're, like I said, this is happening now to notify and say, Dave, you, you, have, you have an offer, and it's about to expire, and you should go use it because you're in proximity. And the paradigm shift here is taking that one step further. You've just walked in, and now letting the merchant engage in a dialogue with you. But the, the key here, and, and I, we need to be really careful, is you know, it has to be a consumer opt-in environment. The notion that at me as a, as a consumer is saving an asset, a, a payment card, um, or an offer, tied to a particular retailer or a manufacturer. That is the signal, right? That, that is me as a user saying, it's OK. This is, this is something I care about. There's a sensitivity to privacy, which means you've got to get that right. Because if people feel they're just being bombarded with pointless offers, they'll switch off from it completely, won't they? That's exactly right. And it's, it's, it's a, uh, it, it has to be user opt-in. And, and on the other side of the equation, you know, I spoke about consumer experiences. If it's spammy, consumers will, uh, they will avoid um, engaging. I have to say, one of the reasons why I actually use Gmail is because it has those spam filters. <laughs> that's, actually, that's a big positive for you guys. Okay, listen, thank you very much for being open with us about the possibilities here. I just want to ask you one very quick question about where this goes next. Right now, we're spending our whole time talking about phones, which is, of course, because that's what everybody has. But you must have seen some of the IoT stuff mm -hmm. floating around. We're, it's phones right now. But, but I'm not asking you for Google strategy. I just want your opinion. It's phones right now, but where are we going next with this stuff? You know, we talk about the mobile phone. I mean, it, can you think of in your lifetime, or even your parents' or grandparents' lifetime, of a voluntary activity that they engaged in 150 times a day? Voluntary activity. They're like, I look at my phone 150 times a day. I mean, it's remarkable. We, we take it for granted, quite honestly. Um, so I thought you were going to say like Google Glasses or something or VR. Or no, I think the phone is early days. I think it's early days. Um, and I think what we're seeing, again, by having this open platform, um, is a very healthy ecosystem of developers who are building on top of Android and making it better and improving, it, uh, improving on it and innovating. And I think the converse of this is the consumer expectations, your point about the future, the consumer expectation is completely changing. Right? Like me as a consumer, when I use Android Pay in a physical store and I get the rich receipt and the rich receipt has the overlay of a map and the transaction value, 
that's valuable. I don't, I don't get that in the physical world today. I can't look at a transaction history of every single merchant and the location in any kind of streamlined way. So that, that again goes to the value added stuff that goes around the payment rather than the payment itself. So you've got to provide rich enough APIs that people can deliver you know, outstanding, exciting, interesting things in that, in that area. So I guess what that brings us back to is, you know, we're talking about Android Pay. It's kind of Android ID because the payment is only one little part of that ecosystem you're building. Is that, is that a fair summary? Yeah, I mean, the... I think, you know, where we're focused right now is the transaction simply needs to work. And it's baby steps and early days. But, you know, ultimately, uh, if I'm a merchant and I'm, um, I'm realizing a lot of value from Google's core advertising platform, for example, right? Like, the conversion needs to happen. And increasingly, that conversion with the mobile device needs to happen. It needs to happen in online context. It needs to happen in the physical world. Um, and again, the consumer expectation is such where every card, every loyalty identifier, every gift it's card, all it all needs to work. Listen, Spencer, you're a great sport. For, I, I hate it when people just go up on a stage and ask rehearsed questions and know it. So I want to say you are a great sport for letting me ask you questions that you didn't know you were coming. I really appreciate that, and I hope the audience appreciated it too. Thank you Thank very you, much. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate it. Thanks.